All righty, folks, we have got something here that we're going to put together today that I know I'm going to get a lot of use of out here. It is called a fence line trimmer, and uh, there were several options available that I saw. DR had one, Titan, which is the one that we have here. What was the third one? Might have been like fencelinetrimmer.com or something. But that one seemed like it was quite a bit more money, and who knows, maybe that one's worth it. Um, this one was in stock when I bought it. So that was a big selling point for me and it was a lot cheaper. I think it was around 1700 bucks delivered. And so it came in on a pallet, just like you see here. So we're gonna go ahead and put this thing together today. Hopefully do a demo sometime soon. As you guys might've noticed, I got a lot of fence line out there and I thought about spraying it, but uh, until then, and even probably after I spray it, I'm still gonna need to do some fence line trimming. I don't know if I can use this around grapevines or not. Maybe it's too uh, too strong for that. I'm not sure, I'll have to do some research. So a few interesting specifications on this thing too. You can find these on their website, but uh, weighs in at 330 pounds, cutting height anywhere from one to eight and a half inches. And it came with, I've got it over here. I think they just included these extra trimmer cords. I got these in a separate box that they just UPS'd or FedEx to me or something, but um, comes with one too on there. It's a pretty heavy duty line. We'll show you a close up of that. Looks like pretty minimal assembly. Just the front three point frame that's gonna go on a swivel point, the PTO shaft, gauge wheel there. Now this thing is a little bit over six foot wide, all right? It's gonna offset to one side of your tractor. I'm interested to see how this thing works. If you guys have used one of these before, let me know. I'm sure there's some learning curve involved to it. Reliability, I'd be interested in that too. It's built pretty stout. I think you go pretty slow. There was a note on here, it said, maximum trimming speed is two miles an hour. Okay, so you're going nice and slow with this thing. Maximum transport speed, seven miles an hour. Never lift the trimmer more than 20 inches off the ground or exceed 35 degrees of horizontal articulation on the PTO shaft. Operate only in low gear, all right? So there's a lot of good information on this warning label right there. All right, so I looked far and wide for a manual. I ended up finding this card right here says there's a manual you can download online, so we are going to do that. Took the crating off, found two more packs of uh, replacement uh, trimmer cable or cord there. Not a whole lot of moving parts. I also like this little, little sticker here. It says optimum impact zone. Um, I think, well, I don't know how we're gonna set this up to, to put it together. Uh, maybe we'll try to leave it blocked up. It came blocked up on these chunks of wood here. So we might just go with that and see if we can make it happen. Let's get to work. Loose parts here. So we're gonna use this around all the pasture fencing that we have out here. Um, I am curious to see if this will work around, not just those grapevines we talked about, but trees as well. So the steel edge is rounded all the way around there. I don't know how aggressive or abrasive that'll be against bark or not. Um, I'll probably try it, you know, in more of the, the fieldy type trees versus up in the, the lawn near the house and see how it affects those first before I get too crazy with it. But uh, I'd like to maximize this use whenever I can. Okay, step one, it says to connect this to the back of your three-point hitch. So uh, the 1025 is close to being freed up. We've got a Spico on there. It doesn't say it's quick hitch compatible or not, but we're gonna try that out and see if it is. If not, we'll go to plan B. Okay, we're gonna put this on there, but something I just noticed, and we'll have Chris give you a better look. This, uh, this top section here is cockeyed. It's not completely square. All this steel down here does look square. I don't know if it's enough to make a difference or not. As long as we can get our, our hook in there or a, a three-point top link in there, we should be fine. But it's, it's visibly out of square. Okay. Nope. 
It is not quick hitch compatible. That's not cool. It appears it would have been so easy for them to make this quick hitch compatible, but it's roughly an inch too wide. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they do that. It's not that hard to make something compatible. I mean, it's not going to work with the Speco. It's not going to work with the iMatch, the Land Pride, the Harbor Freight. Unfortunately, none of the quick hitches. All right, so we're going to go hook it up to the 3025E. There's already no quick hitch on there. We're just going to pop off the flail mower and put it on there. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. All right, here we go. Boom. Boom, couple of booms, need one more. Won't go through there. This won't fit through. Issue number two, this included top link pin does not fit through the category one top link. I don't know, I'm gonna go grab one that I know works. I'll be right back. Okay, visually, I don't see a difference. I don't have any calipers or a gauge. What do you know? Okay. Am I? Oh, oh, I hate these things. All right, so step two is that we're gonna back the tractor up right onto this shaft. There's a, a center uh, hole it's gonna go through. Probably gonna take some finagling to line it up just right. Gotta take this off as well. I think this is your, uh, what do they call that? Your transport bolt. I believe that's what this is. There's a plastic sleeve that seems like it probably should stay on there, but it was coming out when we put the shaft through. So we kind of pounded it back in place. I think that's good. Now we got to put this bolt through there as well. That lined up nicely. And then we're going to raise it up a bit. Oh, and do what? Maybe we'll slide this wood over that way for some additional support. We gotta put this spring right down here. Let's raise it up here. Nice. Oh, it is. It is a locking nut on there. Tighten that down. Next okay, so next step, put the gauge wheel on there. That is going to be adjustable. I'll show you that. There's going to be uh, some spacers or washers that you can adjust that height up and down. That's how you'll adjust your height there in part, or if you want to level it out at least. Uh, then step four is calculate the PTO shaft length. It's 32 inches overall and compressed length, and will work as is for most applications. There's a lot of videos out there where you can adjust. It shows you how to cut the PTO shaft. It's a two-piece PTO shaft, so you can cut both ends equally to shorten it up. So just watch a video out there, a lot of them done um, pretty well so you can see what to do. But that's one of those things you wanna measure twice, maybe three times before you cut to make sure you do it right. So these are those washers and uh, another place that you might've seen these on our, on our channel, 
would be on the sweep all sweeper. It's got similar gauge wheels for cut height. And then um, sort of a variation on these, a little bit different, is gonna be on the Rhino Batwing or the Flex Wing mower. Uh, you put these on the PTO or on the hydraulic rod and you can adjust your cut height with that as well. So um, a pretty, well, fairly common application in the agricultural world. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna put three underneath and I'm gonna put three on top for now. I do see a greasable zerk right here. So I know we have one grease point at least. I'll snoop around for some more. Spacer in there, okay. Okay, so we've got one key on here and it kind of sticks out on the PTO shaft or on the gearbox output, I should say. And that's gonna go right in this little slot. And we just tighten these down on there to hold it in place. It's a skinny PTO shaft too. Mm -hmm. Alrighty folks, um, well, while Chris was on a phone call there for Rhino Hide, I was getting this thing leveled out pretty good. I adjusted these spacers. I put a couple more underneath. I think I wanna start with the trimmer a little bit higher. And you're gonna notice in the manual on the, the hub down here for the actual, the blades itself, that includes a one and a half inch spacer. So you can put that big spacer above or below the cutting head itself where the, the trimmer cord goes in. And so you have another inch and a half of adjustment there. If you want to, you just take that off with a, a bolt that goes right through the bottom on up through. So a lot of different adjustments here. We just have to get it greased up. I'm gonna show you one last cool thing here, which I saw for maintenance. It says you can put um, in the vertical position, not for transport or anything else, but or for mowing. But for maintenance, you can flip this up into the vertical position, have easier access. So if you do want to adjust that that hub that's on here with the spacer, or maybe put a new trimmer cord, that's kind of easy too. We'll give you a close up of that right now. All the way, keep going. Keep on going. Keep going. Keep going. Supposedly. Oh, Alrighty folks, so this is the maintenance position, kind of a vertical position. Uh, instructions weren't super clear. Well, maybe they were. I think we followed them. Seems kind of odd how this bolt is, is holding this thing in place. It's not going to go anywhere though, but you don't want it to go any further that way. It'll bind up that PTO shaft. It probably wouldn't bend it, but who knows? It's actually a kind of a thin PTO shaft on there. Uh, overall though, this wasn't very hard to put together. Hopefully this video helps you guys put it together too. We still have to tighten down a couple of bolts on here, but wanted to get the initial assembly done. So we can show you the bottom side of this hub now and how it uh, adjusts and how you put the trimmer cord in and out. So first, here's the bolt where you would take this out, slide this whole mechanism out, and this black spacer up top could be put on the bottom side of where your trimmer cord goes if you wanted to. That's an inch and a half adjustment right there. And now the trimmer cord itself, you have the four different pieces. These are all separate pieces. It goes in one way and out the other way. You can't back it out. I can't push this back. Well, I'm not supposed to be able to. Well, it's very hard, very hard to do it that way, but you can pull it right out this way, okay? And then I'll find that hole right here and you just kind of slide it right through. It says 10 millimeters you want out the back end, so about a half inch or so, which is about like that. Just repeat it for the whole process. You want to make sure you have four of them in here, otherwise you're going to get a vibration. Alrighty, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, a couple of quick notes. We did not have to modify that PTO shaft at all. It fit just, just like it came out of the factory, so no issues there. You can kind of get a look of how far out this sits. Again, it's 74 inches wide, so a hair over six foot in total length. And we're sticking out probably two and a half foot, maybe closer to three foot. Um, outside of a 60 inch wide tractor, all right? So go off the center line of your tractor. If it's 60 inches wide, then, you know, 30 inches, two and a half foot would be half of that. And then the balance of it would stick out this way. And so that's what you see here. Now, I think that you could probably use this on a subcompact just fine. Their website isn't specific. It says good for 25 to 45 horsepower tractors. Typically, if it's gonna use a PTO shaft, that horsepower requirement would be tied into 
the PTO horsepower, not the engine horsepower. However, I don't see how there's any way that this is putting a lot of strain on the tractor, on the drive line, on the system at all. It's just a trimmer cord. Um, I would think you could use this on a little BX. I mean, it weighs 330 pounds, but it's riding on the ground. It's not that heavy, not putting much of an awkward load on the tractor. I don't know, I'm excited to use it. We got to get it greased up. We're going to show you this in the next video on how it works. There's probably going to be a bit of a learning curve. I think we got to pump up this tire a little bit, this pneumatic tire. I didn't see any spring adjustment needed for the kind of the flex. This is going to give, right? So when you're going around fence posts, this plate here is going to kind of push back and come back around as you're going around a fence post. So I would think you can probably adjust that spring tension to make it a little, you know, not so aggressive and lighter without as much resistance on there so you don't knock down your fence posts. We'll play with that a little bit too. Alrighty folks, so we don't sell this item. We bought this off of uh, Titan's website. So we'll put a link in this video in the description in the body of it so you can see. Probably put a listing on our website too on where you can buy it. We don't carry this, but we needed one. I don't have a product line that offers a fence line trimmer, so I wanted to try this out. But on that note, we do carry all sorts of tractor attachments. If you are looking for something for your tractor, we sell and ship all over the country. Give us a shot, check out goodworkstractors.com. If you wanna see this thing in action, make sure you come back. You can hit that subscribe button right down below, completely free. If you enjoy seeing tractor videos, that might be a good idea. Don't forget, we are now selling merchandise. If you wanna support Good Works Tractors, we're not making any profit, but donating those proceeds. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.